Hello, I'm Daniel from Teach Kids Robotics, and in this lesson, we'll be covering how do robots experience the world, an introduction to sensors. Before talking about how robots experience the world, let's first ask ourselves how do humans experience the world? The five senses allow us humans to do everyday tasks by understanding the world around us. Each of our five senses uses a different part of our body. For example, sight comes from our eyes, touch from our hands, hearing from our ears, taste from our mouth, and smell from our nose. Each of these five senses are used in our daily tasks. Let's reflect on how each of these senses would go and help us learn at school. For example, when we're in the car or driving a car, we need to use our sight in order to see the world around us and make sure we don't hit other cars. We need to use our touch in order to know we're moving the steering wheel, gas and brake pedals. We need to use our hearing to know when someone is honking. And we need to use, for example, our taste and our smell in case there is a gas leak. Once we're at the school, we use our hearing to hear what the teacher is saying, our sight in order to see what's going on on the blackboard. During lunch, when we're eating, we use our sense of smell to know if our food is good or not. All of these different senses help us achieve our task, such as going to school. The same way humans have eyes and ears and nose and mouth, which allows us to sense specific things about the world around us, robots use mechanical sensors to sense what is around them. Now there are equivalents here. For example, for an eye, a robot can use a camera. For a mouth, a robot could use a gas sensor. For feeling, a robot can use tactile pressure sensors. For hearing, a robot can use a microphone. Depending on the goal of the robot, specific sensors are used to understand the environment it's operating in in order to achieve that task. A common sensor is a LiDAR, which is a laser that shoots into the environment, and the duration it takes for that laser wave to be reflected back to the LiDAR is a way to determine how far away a given object is in the environment. Let's take a specific look at sight. Consider a digital camera. It processes light the same way our eyes do, but instead of saving that image, we can take the raw digital ones and zeros that make up the image and actually process them in a computer using a technique known as computer vision in order to identify what is actually in the image. The same way when we're looking out into the world, we see and identify objects around us. There are two types of robot sensors, passive and active. A passive sensor relies on the ambient energy in the world around it to perform a measurement, such as a satellite camera that absorbs the sun's light and looks at the reflections to generate a digital image of the Earth. Or consider a thermometer that uses the ambient temperature of the world around it in order to increase what it reads. On the active side, we have sensors that transmit energy into the environment to allow for a measurement, such as a satellite that shoots a laser at the Earth and looks for reflected waves in order to compute the distance between it and the Earth. Another common sensor, again, that would be active is like the LiDAR, which shoots lasers into the world around it to determine the distance between it and the reflected wave. Let's look at a specific example. The NASA Valkyrie robot is a humanoid-style robot that can walk around. But how is it capable of walking around without hitting anything? It uses a multitude of sensors in order to achieve this. First, it uses an initial inertial measurement unit, or an IMU, in order to help stay stabilized so that it knows when it's falling down, similar to the liquid inside of our ears. It uses a camera for object detection and to determine if the path in front of it is open. It uses a laser scanner to determine the distance from objects around it so that it doesn't actually run into anything. And it uses four sensors in its feet to determine whether or not both of its feet are on the ground. Considering sensors in more detail at a general level, sensors have three main properties. They have noise, or the amount of random energy that's in the environment that the sensor will read 
that can affect the reading, such as when your microphone is on and you hear static. They have resolution, which is the degree of accuracy the dis that a sensor can provide, such as distance on the order of meters or centimeters. As, and we can think of that also like a microscope, giving different levels of resolution. You can see more with a greater degree of resolution. Finally, we also have precision, or the reproducibility of measurements. If you were to sample the same environment multiple times with the same sensor, uh, the sensor reading may actually change. And to limit that change, we would like a high precision sensor. Now we consider all these three attributes because the cost of the sensor itself can change depending on how high quality and how precise and how high resolution with reduced noise we would like the sensor to have. Finally, sensors often require calibration, which is when the sensor is reading a value that differs from the actual value in the real world. Consider, for example, a weight scale that reads two pounds when nothing is on it. We would need to calibrate this weight scale by subtracting two pounds from all of its readings so that it would correctly show zero pounds when nothing is on it. Consider a digital thermostat that was reading 72 degrees when in fact we know it's 75 degrees outside. How would we calibrate it to fix this? We would simply increase thermostat's reading so that it displays three more degrees since we know that it's representing the wrong value by three degrees. So this sensor calibration is often done in robotics, since all of our sensors may be slightly off as they're manufactured in slightly different mechanical components, so that we calibrate them so that they provide accurate readings based on the environment around them. So, I hope in general you've gained an understanding into how robots understand the environment around them, similar to humans that have senses, such as our eyes and our ears, Robots have mechanical sensors, such as cameras and lidars, and this allows them to understand the world around them, such as how far away things are, or if they're standing up in the right direction. So I end this with a question to you. Have you seen any robot sensors around you? Feel free to leave a comment in the description below, and let me know if you have any other questions. And in the next lesson, we'll be covering one sensor in more detail, which is cameras and LIDARs. Thank you very much, and this has been Daniel from Teach Kids Robotics. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. This video has been brought to you by Teach Kids Robotics. You can visit us at teachkidsrobotics.com to check out other information and blog posts regarding robotics. Additionally, we offer curated lists of STEM kits in order for you to try robotics at home. Check out the link in the description.